So this is a video for Chem 1211 at Augusta University on using significant figures in calculations. How do you figure out how many significant figures you should keep in your answer, or what should the precision of your answer be? So precision is really kind of grouped in under significant figures. When we say that you need to keep significant figures in your calculations, we're including precision in that um, mandate to keep sig figs in your answers. And so looking at all of the values from the video on determining significant figures and measurements, these are all of the values on the left. Let's for now again just say that all of these are for milliliters, so we're measuring volumes with all of these. Looking at all of those values, which of those values, and there is only one, which of those values is the least precise measurement? Hopefully you said 110 milliliters is the least precise measurement because based on what we know, when we measured that value, we measured it with a graduated cylinder that was precise to the ones place. Even if you forget how that measurement was taken and you say it's precise to the tens place, that's still the largest place out of all of these measured values. All of these other measured values are either precise to the hundredths place or precise to the tenths place. And those places are getting smaller, so they're getting more precise. So when we do addition or subtraction, the important thing is that we only keep to the least precise place out of all of our measured values. Of course, with all of these values, it's not as big of a deal because they're already in the same units, but we also need to make sure that whenever we're adding or subtracting values, that they're in the same units and the same scale. So if you have a value that's in scientific notation and another one that is not, you need to decide whether you're going to put both into scientific notation so that they both have the same exponent, or whether you're going to put them both into regular expressions where there is no exponent and you want to line up the decimals when you're adding or subtracting so that you can see where your precision is with each of the values. So let's say that we're going to add 4.50 to 110. In math class, your answer would be 114.50, but because both of these are measured values and we're only precise to the ones place from the 110, even though we're precise to the thousandths in the 4.50, that ones place is the least precise place, so we need to round to that place. This 114.50 happens to be exactly a five. There's nothing greater than zero after that five, so if it's exactly 5, then you're always going to round to the even number. What this avoids is it avoids what we would call a positive bias in rounding, where every time you had it exactly a half, you would round up. Then overall, your average or your, uh, your values of your data set would be a little bit larger than they should be based on random, uh, randomness of measurements. So our answer here, because we're rounding to the even value, would be 114 milliliters, of course, because all of these are milliliters. If we do 110 minus 43.0, and we're saying that that 110 is only precise to the tens place, then in our answer, we should also only keep to the tens place. So while you might normally say 67.0, this means we should actually be keeping to the tens place, which means we have to round that 7. We have to get rid of that 7, and when we get rid of that 7 and we round the 6 up to 70, then that's the difference between 110 and 43 milliliters. If instead this was 110 that was precise to the ones place, because we knew how that measurement was made, minus 43.0, now we could keep to the ones place. Now we would be allowed to say 67. We wouldn't be allowed to say 67.0 
because our first value here, the 110, is only precise to the ones place. So adding and subtracting is always going to keep to the least precise place. So what should your answer be for 0 0.10 minus 0 0.08 milliliters? What should your answer be for 82.0 minus 12.0 milliliters? And what should your answer be for 43.0 minus 40.02? milliliters. Go ahead and pause now. This is your last chance to pause. So the 0 0.10 minus 0 0.08 both are precise to the hundredths place. So the difference of 0 0.02 stays as it is. We're allowed to keep that 2 in the hundredths place. We shouldn't add any more zeros onto there and we shouldn't get rid of the 2. 82.0 minus 12.0, both are precise to the tenths place. So our answer should also be precise to the tenths place. So even though 82 minus 12 is 70, you should keep that extra zero there after the decimal point because that is how precise each of those measurements were. The 43.0 minus 40.02, each of these numbers has a different precision. The 43.0 is only precise to the tenths place, even though the 40.02 is precise to the hundredths. So when you do the subtraction and you get 2.98, you do have to round that up to the tenths place. And because you have to round that 9 up to a 10, that becomes 3.0 milliliters. Of course, the other two common operations out of the basic four operations are multiplication and division. When you're multiplying or dividing, we're going to go by the smallest number of significant figures in any of the measurements. And so taking a look again at some of those values that we measured, which of those measurements has the smallest number of significant figures? And which of those measurements has the largest number of significant figures? Again, which measurement has the smallest number of sig fig? which measurement has the largest number of sig fig. 0 0.08 milliliters has the smallest number of significant figures. It only has one significant figure. And the 40.02 has the largest number of significant figures. It has four. So what happens if you do 40.02 milliliters over 11.0 milliliters. We have four significant figures in the numerator. We have three significant figures in the denominator. So whenever you do that math, your answer should only have three significant figures. What's going to happen to the units in this case? The units will both cancel out. So I have no idea why you would want to divide two volumes, but you might be looking for a ratio and that's what this answer would give you. When you do that division, you get 3.6381818 repeating. But again, you're only supposed to keep three significant figures. Now, it wouldn't make much sense to get rid of the larger value because it has more importance in this answer. So you actually want to get rid of the smaller values so 3.64 is the answer you should be keeping because you have to round that 3 up to a 4 because what comes behind is greater than 5. What about 40.02 milliliters times 11.0 milliliters? Again, we have four significant figures and three significant figures. What would happen to the units in this case? You would get square milliliters. I have no idea, again, why you would necessarily want to do this, but that's what would happen to the units. So how many significant figures should you keep in your answer? Well, because the 11.0 has the smallest number, which is 3, 
our answer here should only keep three significant figures. So our answer here of 440.22 milliliters is not what we're allowed to keep for our answer. We would only be able to keep 440 milliliters squared, but then this presents us with an issue because there is some uncertainty here. Is that zero significant or not? And so you may see different ways of showing that that zero is significant. Some people might put a bar over that zero. If that zero happens to be in the ones place, you could put a decimal right after it, but don't add any extra zeros. The other way to be sure that you're showing how many significant figures are there is to actually put that number into scientific notation, because then however many digits are there in front of the exponent in the scientific notation, is the number of significant figures in that value. So go ahead and take a look at these three other expressions. Again, assuming that all of these are measurements with units on them, we're not going to worry right now about what happens to the units. 3.50 times 0.10, 82.0 divided by 12.0, and 3.50 divided by 0 0.08. Go ahead and pause the video. Last chance to pause the video. So the first expression, you're limited to two significant figures, not three. The second expression, both the numerator and the denominator have three significant figures. So that's how many you need in your answer, no more, no less. With the third expression, you're limited to one significant figure, so the answer is 40. Or 4 times 10 to the first, if you're worried about showing that that zero is not significant. If there was a situation where that zero was significant, like 3.50, divided by 0 0.10, which normally would come out as 35, then there would be two significant figures here, and you would be allowed to keep those. If you instead had something that was 3.99 over 0 0.10, which would come out as 39.9, and you're only allowed to keep those two significant figures, then again, that would become 40, but that zero would be significant, and you could also choose to put that into scientific notation. So 4.0 times 10 to the first is different from 4 times 10 to the first because they each have different numbers of significant figures, but they're also both precise now to a different place.